Hello everyone, my name is Binx and welcome back to Let's Play Dear Monster. We're in the last episode. Um, Alan and Farron had a, another rendezvous and um, it was short and <laughs> I was gonna say sweet, but not so sweet. <laughs> well, it was fine. <laughs> it was fine. Um, yeah, it was interesting. I gave my thoughts on that. So anyway, now we're having what looks like another little flashback, which might be uh, interesting and more lore, more revealing lore. I'm in my old room again. The boy from before stands in the middle. He's holding a book in his left hand and a stick in his right one. No, not a stick. To him, it's a wand. He whispers something, then points at the floor. I notice a stuffed bear is lying there, but nothing happens. What are you doing, dear lad? The boy jumps, then swings around. Farron is standing next to him. The boy lets out a relieved sigh, then smiles at Farron. Jeez, don't just sneak up on me like this. I thought it was my aunt. Ah, then does your aunt also possess a deep, masculine voice? <laughs> Binks did not give you a deep, masculine voice. Sorry, dude. <laughs> uh, good point. I, uh, guess I panicked. It happens to us all. But pray, tell me, what exactly are you trying to accomplish? I am terribly curious. I, uh, this is nothing. I wasn't doing anything in particular. Were you perhaps trying to cast a spell? Uh, I guess a little bit. This new book I read had these, had those really detailed instructions, so I thought, it's stupid, I know. Oh, do not say that. It is never wrong to have hope. I truly admire your purity of heart and determination. Please do not give up. But it's useless. I'm not like you. I don't have any magic. Oh, poor, poor baby Alan. Are you absolutely sure? Haven't you ever done anything strange? What do you mean? Think back as far as you can, dear Alan. Have you ever done something you would not normally do? Perhaps when you were younger, you might have thought it was an accident. I... I don't know. I don't think so. What about your aunt? Have you ever done anything that scared or angered her? Anything that would cause her to lecture you or do something unusual? I'm not sure. Oh, wait. I remember. I used to break lots of stuff around the house. I didn't mean to. And I don't remember knocking anything over with my hands. And then my aunt made me do those concentration exercises. Yes, that is precisely what I saw. I mean, what you describe. It, it is most probable you were using magic subconsciously, dear lad. Stalker. So he was most likely spying on him with his magic mirror. So that explains a lot, right? So Alan was using his magic subconsciously. And his aunt did something to make him stop using his magic without him knowing. That's horrible. The boy's eyes fill with hope. And once again, my heart breaks for him. What? I have magic? Well, to say you had magic would be more accurate. As for its current state, I cannot tell for sure. Can't you do some kind of a spell and check? Nay, I'm afraid that it is not possible. Perhaps someday, when you come and visit me at the mansion, that is, your grandfather's home, perhaps then I will be able to assist you and together we shall unlock your true potential. Can't I come today? You can teleport, right? Can't you just take me? Ah, uh, I... I cannot. I am truly sorry. I would not be able to hide your presence, and your grandfather, he... Well, 
I cannot predict what he would do or say, and these days, the mansion is not as safe as it used to be. I would hate to see you get hurt, so I cannot take you there. I see. But I shall always cheer for you as you practice the magical arts. Please do not lose heart, dear Alan. Perhaps one day you will reawaken your power. I believe you are capable of achieving anything you set your mind to. So we do see that Farron does have good intentions, as I said. That he has been honestly trying to help him reclaim his magic, right? For a long while, the boy doesn't say anything. His lip trembles, and I think he's going to cry, but he doesn't. He looks up at Farron and smiles shakily. But then the question is, why doesn't Alan remember all of this? What happened between then and now? So, we have to wait and see. I've already tried to do like a million spells. I'm not going to give up. That's the spirit, and I shall be with you every step of the way. Uh, what is it? Actually, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. About unicorns. About you. You wish to know more about me? Yeah. Oh, how much your request delights me. I cannot describe. Of course, please, ask me anything. I will be happy, no, thrilled, to answer each and every one of your questions. Uh, okay. Wait a sec. The boy goes to his desk and opens a drawer. He takes out a long piece of paper. Looks like a couple of notebook pages taped together. Oh, he's so earnest. He's a scientist at heart, though, right? He's very curious about everything. Oh my, that is quite a long list. <laughs> uh, well, I might have lied about having only a couple of questions. He's so cute. When I opened my eyes, I have a feeling I dreamed about something. Something important. It's like the night before, but I can't remember. A deep, manly voice echoes from thin air, scattering my thoughts. Wakey wakey, sunshine. Get your rest from the bed and get dressed. Or not, your cock is nothing I haven't seen. <laughs> what? How did you see that before? Excuse me? Am I misremembering something? I'm making pancakes. Don't let them get cold. I, I couldn't remember his accent for the first half of that sentence. I was like, wait, who am I talking for? <laughs> wait, Slagathor, rewind. When when did you see it? I'm I'm confused. Or you're just saying you've seen a human one before, so it was like, no big deal. <laughs> if I was Alan, I would have been like, hold on, buddy. What are you talking about? I get dressed and I go to the kitchen. Farron and Hikmut are already there. Hi, everyone. Hey, you're finally awake. Hello, dear Alan. Oh, your face is a sight for sore eyes. Did you sleep well? Are you hungry? Ah, oh, what a silly question. You must be starving. Sit beside me and we shall enjoy our meal together. Hikmat doesn't even look at me. Aw, oh, is he still mad about the greenhouse? I'm so sorry, baby. Please forgive me. Whoa, it smells delicious in here. Hit me up with those pancakes, Sluggy. Really? Really? <laughs> that nickname? Can I call you that? No. <laughs> Thank you for telling him no, because that's... no. What do you want, Wicked? Okay, so I will tell you, because I already got the achievement. Uh, this choice doesn't really matter, but you can get an achievement. Uh, <laughs> so, this is one of those that, you know, you could get funny little text depending on what you choose. This one on the bottom. Disgusting. <laughs> you could get an achievement. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's like, uh, called like peculiar taste or something. So I'll choose it just because the dialogue's so funny. Um, 
I wish... Actually, I guess I could save and load... Well, no, because I'm going to be playing through everybody's routes. And I think this this discussion happens no matter who I play with. This particular one, I think. Oh god, I don't remember. So, yeah, we'll be playing through multiple ones. So, I'll, I'll make a different choice each time. But because this is the first one, I will be making the horrible choice this first time, okay? So, garlic, ketchup, and mayo. Ugh, can you imagine? Ew! On pancakes? You heathen! <laughs> Here we go! Believe me or not, but there are places you could get stabbed for saying that. <laughs> That's so funny. So yeah, achievement. You can get an achievement for that. It's pretty funny. He serves me pancakes. Oh, he didn't even get me- give it to me. <laughs> He's like, no. <laughs> Refuse. He serves me pancakes with maple syrup and some blueberries. I'm happy you're going to eat some proper bre breakfast. These two cannot appreciate good cuisine. I do not wish to offend you. I simply take most of the required energy from sunlight. And my body reacts poorly to heavily processed food. There are only a few pieces of melon on his plate. I don't care about the taste. More coffee, please. I think, like, oh, there's a lot of people who are like, I just need coffee to survive. <laughs> he holds a mug in both hands. I guess coffee is his breakfast. I take a bite of my food. It's perfectly moist, soft on the inside, and crispy on the outside. Delicious. How's life, Hikmet? Can you please forgive me already? Because I don't like when my bae is mad at me, even if we're not together. Too long. <laughs> oh, existential crisis in a nutshell, you poor thing. That's rough. Wrong question, kiddo. Hikmet, how are the plants? Hikmet's eyes brighten. Oh, he's so cute. He just loves his plants. He's such an introvert. That's I, I love him. My my sound lilies are finally starting to move in a rhythm. Most of them are talented above average from previous years. I wonder if it's because of the new fertilizer I used. On the other hand, spinning grass doesn't seem to adapt to it well enough. Further research is required. I'm noticing a trend now with myself. I, I tend to like the the nerdy uh, scientist research dudes who are kind of introverted and emotionally constipated in these games. Hmm. What does that say about me? <laughs> oh, I relate to them, even though I'm not really like that, but I actually kind of relate to them and I like them a lot. Like, I just want to cuddle them and protect them and love on them. They're super cute. Slagathor pours more coffee into Hikmet's mug. What about you, Farron? Anything you want to share? I was about to ask the same thing. Ah, thank you for asking, both of you. I must admit that my day has been wonderful ever since I saw you, dear Alan. I guess Momo's keeping his distance because he's still angry with us, which is fine. We don't need that tension. So... What's the plan for today? Oh yes, I have pondered the matter once more, and have concluded the only way to truly prove ourselves is to venture into the unknown. I have tried to train you in a somewhat controlled environment, but we did not achieve what we hoped for, and the fault is mine alone. That is why today, we are leaving the mansion and embarking on an epic adventure! Farron beams at me, and the air vibrates with power. Behind him, a silvery white portal appears. He walks towards it, gesturing for me to follow. Where are we going? Ah, where indeed? Is it not thrilling? The mystery, the possibilities, the sheer wonder of countless worlds waiting for us? Uh, did you really open a portal to some random place? Are you sure we can handle that? What if something really messed up lives there, like, uh, I don't know, brain-eating mosquitoes? Ugh. Fear not, dear Alan. 
I do not know what lies behind that portal, that is a fact, and some of the worlds I have selected are, uh, as a possibility, are quite dangerous indeed. But I shall be with you every step of the way. Still smiling, he holds out his hand. The light from the portal shines behind him, illuminating his hair. It creates an ethereal, almost angel-like aura. A long time ago, I would have given everything for an adventure like this. What the hell? Let's do it. I've been sitting behind a desk most of my life. Maybe it's time I did something. Something different. Something that hopefully won't kill me. It won't kill me, right? Of course not! I shall make sure of it. Let us begin our heroic adventure. Okay. I trust you, Farron. I give him a little smile and take his hand. As we enter the portal, I expect to feel or see something unusual, but the transition is seamless. The only thing that changes is the scenery before my eyes. Oh, cool! I like it. I love the backgrounds. God, the art is so good for this game. I feel like we're like an MMORPG game or something now. We're in some kind of a medieval looking town. I smell fresh bread baking somewhere nearby. Oh, this, I want bread now. Then I hear the sound of a flute and turn my head to see a small orchestra playing in the street. Uh, I expected something more alien looking, but at least it doesn't look like this world would kill me on the spot. Oh, this will be perfect. I have not seen this domain for a while, but I am quite fond of it. So much natural beauty, yet undisturbed by human expansion. As people walk past us, some give us strange looks. Others openly stare at Farron. Uh, Farron, we're not exactly dressed for this world. Well, you could probably pass for some foreign prince or something, but your horn... If it's anything like in the books I read, wouldn't some people try to catch a unicorn? Farron's eyes darken, his smile vanishing, his muscles tense, and his mouth sets into a tight, painful-looking line. Indeed, there are those who would not hesitate to defile us, to spill our blood, and take our horns, hoping for eternal life. And when the last unicorn falls, chaos shall sweep over the lands, and madness shall rule them all. Did you lose someone important to you? Nay, but my kind has lost so many. I'm sorry. Oh no, I... Please, forgive me for being so grim. Fear not, dear Alan. I have created an illusion that obscures my horn and transforms our clothes. Only the strongest magic could break it. But people stare at you a lot. Um, yes, they always do. To be honest, I do not know why. The corners of my mouth lift into a smile. I guess people are gaping at Farron simply because he's hot. <laughs> Let us go to a place where adventure begins. Maybe. That could be why. I don't know. Farron walks towards a dingy-looking tavern. He swings the door open and sweeps inside with me close behind him. His clear, melodious voice echoes through the place when he speaks. Good people of this town, we are seeking adventure. No matter how difficult, no matter how perilous, no matter how many have tried before, we shall not fail. Therefore, tell us what worries plague your hearts and what dangers lurk in these lands. The tavern gets so quiet you could hear a pin drop. The villagers are gawking at us, some frozen with their arms raised, their cups about to reach their lips. I'm not sure they understood all of Farron's big words. They're like, bruh, we're just trying to eat our lunch. Could you could you stop? <laughs> wow, he's so extra. Uh, we're foreigners. We want to help. If you have any problems, can you tell us about them? Dude, my wife is cheating on me. How do you expect to help me? <laughs> People start whispering to each other. Finally, a man wearing a simple but clean shirt rises, raises from his seat. How are you gonna help me get a job, man? <laughs> There's not much that troubles us, my lord. 
We are blessed with a good king and plentiful harvest. However, one of the neighboring kingdoms, the one north of here. A vile, wicked monster rules there. He killed the king and those brave enough to oppose him, and now he torments the citizens, deriving great pleasure from their pain. Oh no, this is absolutely horrible. He eats children for breakfast, and every week he demands a virgin sacrifice. For the smallest offense, he burns people's homes to the ground. He robs them of their gold and hoards it deep underground. That sounds... Hmm... That sounds kind of familiar, like a certain something. That creature! He must be stopped! Uh... Farron... His scales are sharper than any sword known to mankind. His breath alone is hot enough to melt one's skin off. He uses it to all to torture and kill the innocent. Oh, the horror! It's a dragon, isn't it? <laughs> Alan. <laughs> His face is like my face, like, oh no. I, my mouth is watering. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, of course. Of course it would be him. Of course! We can't escape him, can we? Of course. Ah, yes, a winged red demon who laughs at the misery of those below him as he rains fire on their land. <laughs> Ellen's over here face palming like, why is it always him? Why? Why? A, a dragon! Farron turns to me, his eyes practically glowing with determination. I have a bad feeling about this. This is the piece we've been missing, dear Alan, to defeat a dragon, the greatest villain, the purest, most fundamental adventure- No, dude, we, we've seriously already had to deal with him, like, a couple times. <laughs> you do know they're probably talking about Embrus, right? Oh, it does not matter. Destiny has led us here. And now you shall become the hero you were always meant to be. You shall fight the evil beast and kill it, just as Sir Equizio did in his tale. Oh, how my heart rejoices! No. <laughs> no. Before I can say anything else, Farron has grabbed my hand and opens his portal. He jumps through and I have no choice but to stagger behind him. Here we go. Oh, cool! Yo! Embrace, babe, what's up? Long time no see. Oh, Binks is going to get extra thirsty. <laughs> you know, you know how it'd be. <laughs> Embrace, I'm sorry to do this to you again. Sorry to interrupt whatever is going on here. I love your throne room. Looks really badass. That dragon looks for real ferocious. I don't know if that's you, but it looks like really cool and scary. Love it. We emerge is a room. We emerge is a room. No. We emerge in a room with a ridiculously big dragon statue towering over a tiny throne. Yeah, that's that's really tiny. <laughs> Needless to say, the throne is occupied. What the fuck are you two doing in here? Why- are you guys stalking me? Like, seriously? <laughs> kind of? Like, yeah, I mean, something's going on. Like, seriously, you guys are thirsty or what? Like, I thought Binks was the thirsty one. <laughs> I mean, I am. Embrace, I can't help it. But, like, the story is, like, clearly having something going on with you in, in between these two, so... It's a sign that you should save Alan from this crazy unicorn. So please, please rescue him. Like, just have a like a role reversal thing that clearly, like, you're supposed to be the villain, but you should actually be the hero and you should save Alan from the unicorn, you know? That's what should happen. That's totally what should happen. You should save him. Yeah. You should find a way to like break the contract, uh, the bond, the familiar familiar bond and, and save Alan. I would like that, please. <laughs> I would really like that. Oh, uh, Embrace. Please. 
if not, then you could just, you know, be real and um, come and visit me and Coco, and and we would we would be happy. Since Alan threw away his chance at you, you know, Alan, you fool. Ugh, poor Alan. I do feel sorry for him. <laughs> I'm sorry, Embrez. Why are you so hot? Uh, hi. We just came to visit because we missed you. Yep. End of story. <laughs> Alan's so cute. He's so adorable and awkward. Uh, Farron. Prepare to die, you wicked demon! You have tormented this kingdom long enough, and today is the day of reckoning. Today, justice shall prevail. He's like, Farron, please stop. He's just face palming over there. <laughs> Oh, poor Alan. Sorry, Farron didn't get the memo. He doesn't know what memos are, so... Yeah, just ignore him, please. What the hell's wrong with this one? Did you literally fuck his brains out? Yep, that's it. Yep, sorry. Please ignore him. <laughs> oh, I love Embrace. But the three of them do look really hot together. But, uh, but Farron is just, just a little crazy. Yeah. Just, just a little crazy. Been speaking of. Oh, oh, here it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of been building up, right? He licks his lips, and his eyes move over my body in a way that makes me shiver. I can see his huge dick piecing, uh, piecing, uh, his piece, uh, strain against the fabric of his pants. I'm so flustered. Embers, don't do this to me. <laughs> I was kinda horny, and you are hot for a human. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, no, I mean, right in front of his boyfriend? Wow, you are so bold. Even Alan's like, oh, oh. <laughs> um. Farron blinks at Embrace. His face goes beet red. And for a moment, I think he's too shocked to speak, like, wow. Of all the, the vulgar, despicable things to say. Hey, relax. I'm not asking for his hand in marriage. I know you guys are bonded and shit. I just want to have some fun. I'm not into horses, but what the hell. You live once, right? You guys up for a threesome? Yeah! There it is. <laughs> oh, and Bruce, this is why you're, you're, you're so good. You're so, you're so hot. You're so... Uh, oh, I love him. Thank you, developers, for making my dream come true. <laughs> I wish Farron wasn't included, okay? Because even though it, it does look very hot, but like, oh, yeah. Sexy man. Sexy dragon man. He laughs at his own joke. I feel like hiding my face in my hands because he said, you up her three so <laughs> Oh, puns. Oh, Farron, no, don't ruin the moment, Farron, why? Why you like this? It could've been fun. Farron clenches his fists, and the air explodes with power. A wave of anger and disgust hits me like a well-aimed bullet. It almost knocks me off my feet. Today you shall perish, dragon! Come, Alan, let us unlock your true potential. My beautiful familiar. His body prepared to strike, his eyes full of righteous fury. He came here for me, to give me an epic adventure, a catalyst to gain control of my magic. He already showed me how much he cares about me. Now it's my turn. My heart speeds up as adrenaline rushes through my veins. Any doubts I might have had are gone, no matter what happens. I'll stay by his side and won't let him down. I'm ready. And here I thought you had a brain in that small monkey head of yours. Too bad. You dare to challenge the great red dragon? You will burn. He jumps from his throne and growls. The sound echoes through the chamber as flames burst out of his body, as high as the dragon statue. The air gets hot, so much that it burns my lungs. Farron raises his hand, and I see vines shoot through the walls from every direction. They dart towards Imbris, but he uses his blaze like a shield. 
instantly turning them to ashes. Farron claps his hands, but the light that comes out is dim. It doesn't even reach Embrus. Ellen, mix your power with mine! I concentrate and find the cluster of energy. I gather as much as I can and direct it outside, towards Farron. For a moment, the vines shine brightly and gain speed. One breaks through Embrus's fire. He hisses in pain as it stabs his leg. But then, my magic fizzles out. Embrus's flames explode and destroy the remaining plants. He snarls, then grabs the vine sticking from his leg and pulls it out. Ouch! Is that all you've got? Pathetic. Alan, I need more energy! Embrus takes a deep breath, then opens his mouth. What comes out is a huge ball of fire. He spits it out straight at us. I clench my teeth and push more magic towards Farron. Why is it so hard? Why can't I give him more? Farron splays his fingers and a silvery white shield springs from his hand. It grows, enveloping us. For a second it seems impenetrable, and I almost sigh with relief, but then Imbris' projectile hits it, breaking my magic. Imbris shoots another fireball, making the whole barrier shake. Then the next one, and another. Another one! <laughs> Sorry. I'm desperately trying to fuel Farron's magic. But my energy trickles out of me in small, pathetic streams. Black spots explode in front of my eyes and I almost lose my balance. I can see Farron's muscles strain under his tunic. His breathing quickens. <laughs> I can do this all day. Something's wrong. He shouldn't be this powerful. What do you mean? When he came to the mansion, his magic was inferior to mine. But here, it's as if the whole chamber feeds his flames. It is so horribly suffocating. My light cannot shine through. Ha! Huh. I stuffed this room with a shit ton of magic. Did you really think you could defeat me in my home? I guess this is what you get for being fucking stupid. Yeah, home court advantage, they always say. Another fireball bursts out of Imbris's mouth. It rams into the barrier. Farron groans, and I watch as the surface cracks in several places. And then, the shield shatters. No! Time to say goodbye. I'm going to rip you to shreds. Imbris jumps towards us, his claws ready to strike. His mouth twisted into a vicious, merciless snarl. I whip my arm up, desperately trying to summon my magic. I press Farron's body to mine. All my life, I did things that were expected of me. I got good grades, did the chores, and tried my best not to be a burden. I've been working towards a goal. Become a doctor. Make my aunt proud. And then, I met Farron. And he showed me a completely different world. The world in which you don't have to be perfect. Even the guilt, it might lessen someday. As long as he's by my side. I don't have to endure. I don't have to deny myself. I don't have to suppress anything. Please, I want to protect him. Even if it's the last thing I do. Please let me save him. Embrace's claws are inches away from my face. I squeeze my eyes shut. An ear-splitting boom echo explodes inside the chamber. I open my eyes and see a big glittering shield. It's right in front of my palm. Embrace's body flies through the room and hits the wall hard. He gasps as the impact knocks the wind out of him. He falls to the ground and for a second lies frozen in place, staring at me. What the hell? Helen, you... you did it! You removed the block! The, the block? Uh, that is... I ha had a theory. No, more like a feeling that some kind of an external force sealed your magic. I did not share it because, well, I was not certain. And yet, you managed to unlock your power on your own. That is truly remarkable. I expected nothing less from you. 
Uh, so that big blast in the shield, it was all me? Yes, indeed. Imbra staggers to his feet. He narrows his eyes at me. So, turns out you're not just some powerless worm, huh? How dare you talk about him this way? Magic does not define one's worth. Even without it, Alan has proven to be the kindest, most hard-working, wonderful person I've ever met. And together, we shall bring an end to your despicable... Farron. No. I want to leave. But why? The dragon is weakened and you have unleashed your true potential. Now we can... Please. He almost killed us. We might have a chance now, but... I'm still figuring things out. Uh, I'm not strong enough. Not yet. I don't want to get hurt. And I don't want you to get hurt, either. Applause. I, I applaud you, Alan. You're so responsible. Such a good guy. Oh, uh, I have not realized. I was so eager to plunge into this epic battle that I failed to notice your fear, your doubts. Please forgive me, Alan. It's okay. Let's go home. And let's end the episode here. So, uh, <clears throat> some stuff after this. I think will take a while, so I think it's a good spot. So thank you guys so very much for watching. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this. And until next time, have a nice day. Bye-bye.